You're about to be drenched with the rain of the world. You're about to experience supernatural emancipation and power detonation. A soul watch with Evangelist Isaac Emmanuel. You carry me where some carry the other. For prayers and counseling, call 070-61990-110. Soul Watch with Evangelist Isaac Emmanuel. Isaac Emmanuel. Listen and be blessed. Shabala beish, kabala da gabara beige beisha. Rebete ge no mahande ge de ge beish katala ba. Kumbra da ga ne mahala ga beish katele brege de gusketia. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please get seated. Father, we ask that you help us this evening. Open our eyes to understand the mysteries of your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Um, we are very excited to have you this evening in God's presence. Last week, we sincerely apologize about what happened last time. It was not deliberate. Um, it, it is out of human error. Uh, what uh, mis, misinformation that actually led to that. But we give God the glory that we are here today. Brothers and sisters, I want you to open up your spirit. I hope by now you should have understand that so watch fellowship is not a receive it now movement. We are here to provoke a recultureization in the mental pattern of a believer. That is to say, to provoke something in the heart of a believer that will prepare him towards the return of the master. We are living in a generation where so many things has gone wrong. And the worst that can happen to a man is for you not to understand times and season. The Bible said, Jesus was speaking to them and he said, for unto you it is given to know Blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear. It is not given to everybody to know and it's not given to everybody to see. So this message we're going to, this thing I'm going to teach this evening is dearly important. Please open up your heart. A lot of people are realizing that Jesus will still tarry. And if you consider the kind of messages that are coming from the pulpit you will be discouraged you will be deceived what are the things that you will see and you will know that christ is about to come that is what we're going to study so that you will start amending your life so that you start preparing yourself to be rapturable so that you will start expecting the arrival of the master don't be deceived Jesus will come again. I don't care who is telling you that he's not come. Jesus is coming very soon. If there is a word to, to, to qualify that soon, we should have used it. Jesus is coming sooner than we think. Amen. So, today's message, I'll be speaking on what I titled the signs of his return and the end of age. The signs of his return and the end of age and before we proceed there are things we must consider so many things there are so many things we must consider yes first of all we are going to consider number one the predictions the prophecies that has gone ahead of him the things that were said about him the seven accurate prophets that talked about his return so we should expect him now the prediction of his coming was first said in the book of genesis this thing god prophesied the return of christ 
even before Christ came. Genesis chapter 3, have it on the screen. Genesis chapter 3. If you go to verse 15, you will see the prophecy that was given at that place. The Bible was talking about the seed of the woman, which is Christ. Genesis chapter 3, go to verse 15. It says, and I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Now look at here. He shall bruise your head. That is the re that is that is the return of Christ, and you shall bruise his heel. That heel is the crucifixion. That bruising is the return where Christ will come to make total spectacle of all the things that doesn't align with his lordship. The prophecy of his return started from Genesis chapter 3. I don't want to go too deep into it because we have a very long journey to make this evening. Now, you will find out there are seven assured testifiers. Seven assured testifiers that Jesus is coming again. Number one, Jesus himself testified. Take note of it. You read it when you get home. Himself, that is Christ himself told us that he's coming. John chapter 14 and verse 3. John chapter 14 and verse 3. If you take it from verse 1, he was talking to them, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Say, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. Now look at now. He said, if I now look at that verse 3. He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am there, you may also what? Be. Now Jesus prophesied and predicted this coming. We are talking about the seven testifiers. Seven testifiers that should give you assurance that Christ is coming again. The number one testifier is Christ himself. As we, uh, we've seen in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 3. Then we have, we're also going to see in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verses 24 then and 25. When you get home, you're going to read that. Now, the second testifier the angels out of apostles chapter 1 get to out of apostles chapter 1 and verse 11 the second testifiers are the angels if you check out chapter 1 verses 11 who also said men of Galilee why do you now go to verse 10 do a little bit backward go to verse 10 let's understand he said and why they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel uh-huh he says who's also said men of galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven this same jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will also come in like manner as you saw him go into what into heaven those were angels the first testifier is Jesus himself. The second testifier are angels. This was after the ascension of Christ. The day he ascended, his disciples were all gazing into heaven. Ah, what is going to be our hope now? And angels appeared unto them and said, That same Jesus that ascended will soon come again. So, the third testifier is Apostle Peter. If you check out of Apostle chapter 3 verse 20, then the fourth testifier, Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4 to 7. Then the, the fifth testifier, Apostle James, out of Apostle chapter 15 and verse 16. The sixth testifier, Apostle John, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. And the seventh testifier, Jude, that is Jude verse 14. These are seven, seven assured testifiers that guarantees that Jesus is going to come again now what are the signs of his return let's go into our message for today there are two M's to this message number one the number one M of this message is the end of all things are at hand we should therefore watch out for the return of the master that is the number one M is to let you know that the end of all things I want you to understand the two different things. We're going to go to the scripture so that you understand it. The return of Christ is not the end of all things. That's not the end of the age. The Bible speaking in the book of Matthew, we're going to get it. You will see it. Now, on that note, you will find out that he said, they asked him, what shall be, go to Matthew chapter 24. Let's go very fast. 
we have to be very fast matthew chapter 24 take us from verses 1 24 and verse 1 then jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to him came up to show him the building of the temple and jesus said to them do you not see all these things assuredly i said to you not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down uh-huh now as he sat on the mount of olives his disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be please take note of what i'm saying when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age there is the sign of his return and there is that of the end of the age i will differentiate them so that you understand now the second aim of this message is to understand prophetic signs as pointed in the scriptures and identify each step and season that is to understand the prophetic sign where we are in the calendar of god you know the way you work with program date time and season god has a prophetic calendar so when a season come he unfolds so i'm going to open your eyes there are about 12 signs of his return we're going to talk about maybe we'll end at seven or maybe five whatever we we'll get to and time is up we we'll stop so now we're going to go to the number one sign of his return the number one sign of his return is church age and first prophets the number one sign of the return of christ is church age and first prophets i will show you matthew chapter 24 yes that is verse 3 now go to verse 4 let's go please very fast he said and jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one does what deceive you go to the next verse sir. go to the next verse for many will come in my name saying i am the christ and we do what we deceive many let me confirm it to you there are two scriptures we're going to be studying revelation chapter 6 go very fast revelation chapter 6 verse 1 the number one sign of his return if you want to understand the prophetic calendar of god read revelation chapter 6 and matthew chapter 24 together get two bibles if you read this one you read this one you will see i'm going to show you things there now first one he said now i saw when the lamp opened first of all if you go to chapter five we will have a time we will have a service where we'll talk about the coronation of christ how christ was coordinated i hope you know that after jesus died and resurrected and returned to heaven that god called a universal meeting the last time both hell and demons were officially invited to heaven yes go to revelation chapter 5 you will see it there god called the meeting because he's a just god he's not by us he's the god of all he's the one that even created lucifer who turned satan are you getting what i'm saying so god is a just god if not he would have collected his power from satan before now but he allowed it till the time comes so when after jesus has died there is a coronation ceremony that took place in heaven that will satisfy the requirement of justice before the presence of both man god and fallen spirits so god called a universal meeting in heaven and all the angels were present man humans from earth went the representative of man was john in that meeting then people under the earth which are the fallen demons were there so a voice said who is worthy to take the scroll from the hand of he that sits on the throne and read what was therein that scroll are the prophetic end time calendars that we are about to unveil now lift your hand and say father i can hear you say father open my heart open my eyes to understand in the name of jesus now so like i was explaining to you 
when the Bible said that there was silence in heaven for 30 minutes nobody including Satan himself including archangels nobody was able to take this scroll because it's a prophecy that has to do with man John began to cry when he began to cry one of the 24 elders say unto him he said weep not he said there is one who is worthy the lamb who was slain is worthy so Jesus went and took the scroll and now when he took the scroll the meeting was called so that both heaven hell and man will understand seasons that is what God is doing here so he now said now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder come and see yes go to the next verse and I look and behold a white horse a white what please follow follow a white what a white horse he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer this man on a white horse is a false prophet that is this release of this white horse angel is the reign of fake pastors false prophets everywhere you will see churches everywhere the number one sign of the return of Christ is that there will be churches everywhere and fake pastors will be many that was what Jesus told them in the book of Matthew chapter 24 that the number one sign that I am about to come back is that church will multiply but there will be fake many will come in my name say I am what Christ and they will do what they see many so he taught them and he left now in the book of Revelation this is where he released it that season began check the church in every street you will find up to 20 churches in one street yet who are the prostitutes that you see in Asaba all of them get church check the streets who are the yahoo boys church members all of them has a pastor do you know to understand that pastors now do spiritual work for them my, my brother went to one church like that and the pastor was telling the member do you know why that maga have not paid say because the first one that paid you didn't bring my share hello are you getting what i'm saying now so the number one sign of the return of christ is multiplication of churches and fake pastors half more than half of nigeria are professing christians yet nigeria is the number one corrupt nation in the world it means that there is something we are not getting right if by the population of Christians that we have, Nigeria was supposed to be one of the best nations if we are practicing what we are preaching. So Christ told you, don't be deceived that somebody is a church member. Don't be deceived that somebody is calling Christ. Somebody can be preaching the word of God and the word of God is not in it. Oh, you didn't get what I said. I want to repeat myself again. Somebody can be preaching, preaching in the name of God, preaching from the Bible, but the word of God is not in it hello uh, is anybody following what i'm saying here now please pay attention because we are here to understand the seasons so that you prepare yourself towards the end after this one next sunday we're, we're going to be talking about survival strategy i'm going to show you because is it this thing let me let me not get there so now you go to churches what pastors are preaching are what members wants to hear not what they need to hear everybody wants to pastor 5,000 capacity church if you post some of them to the village they will go and bribe the senior pastors and they will post them back to the city so there is high level of falsehood 
native doctors saw that business is no more on red garment all of them went and bought suit and got a hall so their shrine is at home they are carrying bible about in the street my senior brother was telling me a pastor who comes to smoke in their street before he goes to minister on his faith clinic day hello are you getting what i'm saying now don't be deceived the other day a reverend father started posting heresy preaching things that are leading many to hell first of all he woke up the other day and told them if you're drinking alcohol go ahead and drink all of us will meet in heaven which heaven this is a generation where men will be preaching things that will suit their weakness every one of us has a weakness there's something you are working on there's something i'm working on but listen the spirit of christ will never allow you to preach your weakness as a message for the people to practice it so that you will justify yourself as a man that does the right thing if alcoholism is your weakness don't impose it on others trying to find scripture by the way christ turned the water into wine do you know the kind of wine he turned? Last, I think, a few days ago, there was another post also in the name of that reverend father. He said, if your wife slap you, he said, just go to one bar and sit down and take one bottle. What is that guy trying to preach? The first one he did, the first one he said, I was walking in the streets of Asaba one day and I saw young men gathered. They were gathered with pack cartons of beer. You know what they were saying? He said, last, last, church, nurse, come. Now them say, me will not drink. Now them say, me will drink. Last, last, church, nurse, come. False prophets. Many will come in my name saying, I am what? The Christ. And they will do what? That is the man on the white horse. He is on a white horse to appear as though he is righteous. But his mission, that word, there you see, bow. The Greek word that interprets it is butchering. He butchers people. He's a fake pastor. A fake what? This is a generation where fake Christians are more in number than true Christians. Lift your hands and pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, anything in me that does not represent you in totality, Help me to overcome it. Talk to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, whatever that does not represent you in totality in my life, any practice that I am putting on that does not align with your testament, oh, remove it from me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so the second sign of his return. Please, let's go. Time is far spent I don't want to talk very deep into the church <laughs> because this is a generation where men are building their empire a false prophet is not a man who uses charmo a false prophet is a man who uses God to get what he wants get the I want you to get the difference so that you don't be thinking is when you go to native doctor that you're a fake pastor anytime you fix a program why you are fixing it is at least after this program i'll make five million naira. the goal of the program is not to impact the people the goal of the program is to make more money that is how they think be not deceived jesus said so one of the greatest trade and one of the greatest sign of the end time is deception deception men will not be saying the truth in their heart you see a brother lying to a brother and a sister lying to a sister you are worshiping in the same church yet you saw the fake drug to your pastor somebody came into the market and told you i am a, i am a child of god and you begin to tell him you are of the same faith you worship under the same church you take the same communion yet you gave him a fake product 
at the at the amount of the original deception that is what Christ is saying you know you don't love a lady and you want to marry her because of her money you don't love a guy you are just running after him because of his fame deception the Bible is warning us in this end time that one of the signs of the return of Christ is deception men will deceive many that is the reason why people say all kind of things just to raise money in programs where I went for mission last week the guy came to me and said sir that these people are driven with prophecy I told him I'm, I, I, I am not actually here to give them the word teaching that's why I came Why, where the pastor got me annoyed is when he went to get another pastor after he has tried to approach me and I proved uh, opposite of what he was expecting so he went and get another pastor to come and start quoting scriptures to me I snubbed them snubbed their subjection prophecy now is by psychology you will come and tell your pastor a little thing so he would now start pressing for instance you told him that you don't understand what is happening to your business nowadays and that something is shaking in your business he said okay he just say a little prayer with you the next day you come from service he begin to tell you that there is an evil arrow that was released against your business even to an extent somebody would just come and price and go you say yes it's not prophecy the guy is using psychology on you then you will understand maybe you told him that your husband is a trader and that nowadays bad friends he doesn't understand now the next thing is start giving you prophecy that your husband comes home late and you that is very gullible you may jump in yes man of god prophesy at the end of the day you go and burn candle you go and give them money christ is saying that many they won't come in the name of a shrine they will tell you i came in the name of amadion they will be speaking in tongues they will be they will be playing with scriptures don't be deceived because a man is quoting bible if you set and quote that scripture to christ hello are we together here he said for it is written I will give my angels what charge over you that was set am quoting to you Jesus God God he was quoting to God he was yeah you know the Bible said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God Satan was quoting word to word now he saw word and was quoting word to him so don't be deceived because a man can come and recite scriptures i'm gonna speak and your life i'm gonna and be quoting there are there are perfect grammars they can recite the scripture of head that doesn't eh, that doesn't validate their calling it could be their stomach that called them hello are we together here let's go please time is fast but the second sign of his coming the second sign scarcity of peace and war go to that matthew go to matthew before we come okay go to revelation the next verse okay look at it now look on the screen when he opened the second seal i heard the second living creature saying come and what see yes another horse very red this is red horse went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from where from the earth <laughs> please pay attention i'm going to explain to you russia and ukraine problem now so that you understand where you are it says power was given to him so that he will take away what peace from where from the earth 
and that people should be what? That people should kill one another. That men should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. That is war. Go to Matthew. Go to Matthew 24. You see, the second sign of his return is scarcity of peace and war. There will be scarcity of peace. There will be abundance of war. Battles. What is, why is Ukraine and Russia killing themselves? Why is Iraq and Iran ever fighting? What are they dragging that they cannot resolve? Why is Afghanistan in hot contents? Why is Nigeria ever persecuting the Igbos? Why is it that in every generation there must be one who will be crying or agitating for the independence of what they call the Afghan nation? Why? I want to open your eyes because some of you has gone into what you don't know. This is the end time. This is part of the sign. Christ said, I will give you a signal to tell you that I'm about to come. That one, the second signal I will give you is that there will be, there will be restlessness on earth. Peace will be very scarce. There won't be peace on earth. Number one, that is the angel of war. That is, that is the spirit of war. The spirit of destruction. Chaos city and calamity that left the heavens. My fear. Listen, I saw a man, I saw a post. So many men of God on Facebook, they are saying they will command Ukraine and Russia battle to stop. Lies. Okay, go and read the scriptures. Lies. You can't. You didn't ordain it. God ordained it. Men of God should read the time so that they will know where their, where their limitations are. You cannot stop the prophecy of the second coming. So, battle in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine, is part of the fulfillment of prophecy. God, are you in Matthew? Go to Matthew, sir. Matthew chapter 24. Go to verse 4. You go to Facebook. Listen, I'm, I, am I not praying for Ukraine? I am crying for Ukraine. I pray for Ukraine every day. Ask me what I pray. You know my prayer? That the Lord will preserve his elect. You can't stop the battle. Don't let anybody cajole you into what you don't know. You go to church and somebody is telling you, I'm going to command the battle and it's going to stop. He say, yes, sir. A lot of people will be jumping up. Why do you have your Bible? Why are you not studying it? He said, and Jesus answered and said, take it that no one deceives you. Uh -huh. Go to verse 25. Uh, go to verse, go to verse 6. Verse 6. Look at where he told them what will be in the end of the time. So now Jesus was telling them what will be for them at the end of times. And what he told them was very shocking. Because you will understand this thing except the Holy Spirit helps you. Please ask the Lord in humility. Ask God, please. In this prophetic season, help me to understand the time. Just pray that prayer. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now look at Matthew 24, verse 6. He said, And you will hear of what? Wars. And what? Rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must what? Come to pass. You know who is saying this thing? Jesus. He told them before he left. Now, when after the coronation, he opened the seals. The second seal contains that prophecy that there will be war. Now, we saw how the angel will achieve that prophetic architecture. How, will, how is he going to achieve it? 
what is the strategy that he will use the bible said for him to cause war on earth that he will take away peace from earth peace in three categories number one in in people's individual life check it very well it is in this season that we begin to hear that people are drinking poison diet is in this season that we see that husband is killing wife wife is killing husband there's no peace when you lack an internal peace you cannot exhibit external peace it is a man that is at peace within himself that will distribute peace to his surroundings so watch people now their life is on wreck they are ever worried things are troubling them what you want to pay house rent you want to do this after house rent children's school fees peace is far from the earth so this thing that somebody is telling you say and well, there's no way because christ told us that god ordained it christ said it then he showed us what happened in revelation how it was achieved that god gave power to that angel to take peace from the earth so that the people on earth will kill one another the second one is peace in the family there's no peace in the family because individuals lack peace it is when you are full of peace and your wife is full of peace that your children will know peace but when you lack peace and your wife lack peace your home will lack peace and when a family lacks peace the society will be short of peace are you getting what i'm saying a good man builds a good home a godly family makes a godly society that is the pro that is how god wired it so one does not have peace he cannot replicate peace in his family and his family cannot produce peace to the society because boko haram is someone's child a non gone man is coming from somebody's family he said that peace will be taken away from the earth check it check all the things that have been happening let's bring it home let's not talk about ukraine and and russia now that might be too far why are the ajors fighting with the shakiris these are common brothers why are the APAs fighting with other tribes you come even among the Ibos, why is Agmeri going after Omoleri? Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying? The, listen, this thing is not because the government is marginalizing anybody. This thing is not because anything happens. Check it very well. Some of the people that entered the government, they entered the government with a heart to be nice. But there is a prophetic calendar that is unfolding all over the world that every man must play part in it. So that spirit is using the unsaved, those that do not have Christ, to achieve that prophecy. Go to the north, they are fighting among themselves. Go to the Yorubas, you see. A, a, you see a community fighting the community because they are dragging land go to a community you will see two families killing themselves because they are dragging a portion of land the Bible said that that angel will take away peace from the earth the second sign of the coming of Christ is scarcity of peace and abundance of war that is the second sign so say you will hear of wars and rumors of wars are you seeing it? Do, do you watch France 24? You don't leave TVC, leave all these channels. They are doing local news. Try to watch CNN. CNN might not even give you the food gist. See something like France 24 and the other is it WTL whatever channel. You will see, you, you will see one of the a man was driving his car. A Russian soldier climbed on him and his car with an armored car. The individual is living online. Now, check. Russia 
is having the backing of China, a dangerous nation too. South and North Korea is backing China, and China is backing Russia. Then Britain and America and Germany is backing Ukraine. If these six or eight nations jam in war, there will be what we call Third World War. And if that happens, it's not this gun and knife they are using in Nigeria. IPOP and Nigeria soldiers are still playing. They are playing war start. Kiki, kiki, kiki. That's what they are doing. Go out there and see. The real war is the war of missiles. Weapons. Russia was threatening the whole world. They said they were showing a, they were showing a weapon that if they release it, including themselves, that made it, everybody on earth will die. I mean, one thing that they will shoot. This is a battle of missile. This is now the contents of what you breathe. So, you know, Nigeria, Nigeria is still a joke. Watch Ukraine and Russia battle. You will see what they happen. Less of gun shooting, more of missile release. So, if Nigeria falls in fracas with a nation that uses missile, where are we going? Where are we going? That is when our politicians will know the calamity that they have done to themselves. That the money they should have used to train the youths to develop the nation and make their own ammunitions, that they embezzled it and sent it to China, sent it to America, bought houses in Canada, and all the rest of them. When, a, when war falls out between nations, that is when they will know how wretched they are. Because America, where you want to run to, there is battle. Is it not people that are bringing the children from Ukraine now by that time everybody was watching to go to Ukraine understand the time I will show you we will get to an economical problem so that I will show you so that all this thing you are running I want to go to America you're wasting your time America has expired China has expired the Western world has expired the last place that the move of God will be is Africa stay here and establish yourself do your best to build your business network Across the continent you will be one of the greatest people that lived according to the prediction of the scripture so hello what I am teaching you is not just spirituality alone I am teaching you global thinking I am showing you the prophetic map of God's of how God wants to build the world economy I'm showing you the, the I mean a predictable path that if you follow you won't go down say you hear of war rumors of war see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not it's not yet it's just a sign that Christ is about to come okay the third one famine Go to verse 7. Let's show them farmer. Then we'll go to Revelation chapter 6. Go to verse 7. Yes. He said, For nation will rise against nation. That is, Ukraine and Russia are fighting. And what they are fighting for has nothing, there's no meaning in it. It is something that two presidents can sit down with coffee and agree on. That is what, what they are killing people for. Thousands of people have been displaced in, in Ukraine. nation against nation that is that is a very big war nation against nation kingdom against kingdom check it out check nigeria government is the one dealing with uh the people they should be helping because the Igbos feel they are cheated so they are crying the government doesn't want to list them because it's not in their power to list them. There's a spirit that regulates them, so they are falling back with force. Say, I will speak to them in a language they understand. What language? War is not a man speaking, it's the spirit of the end time that is programmed to speak to a man who doesn't know Christ. So, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be what? Famine. That is the third sign. Famine, scarcity, lack. 
hunger. Go to Revelation chapter 6. Let's show them. Revelation chapter 6. You're going to now take it from you're going to take it from verse 5 and 6. Revelation chapter 6 verse 5. Go to verse 5. Verse 5 has the third seal. Yes, he said, when he opened the third seal, I had the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scale in his hand. Go to verse 7. Uh-huh. And I had a okay, verse six, he said, and I had a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quarter of wheat for a what? A denarius. And three quarters of belly for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. There's a translation that said that a man's daily wage will be for his food. Hunger. Mm, that's what it is. Jesus called it famine before he left. When he left, he now gave us a clearer interpretation. Remember that this thing we are discussing is a continuation of where we stopped. We started with the seven spirits of God. Where we should have started this series is the seven churches. So that you understand how Revelation was written. Revelation was written with the aim of Christ showing the church what we be. And he gave that revelation to his servant. If you go to Revelation chapter 1, you will see the revelation of Jesus Christ that was shown to his servant, John. Now, to the churches, this thing was given so that you and I will understand the time where we are. So, the third sign of his coming is hunger, famine, scarcity of food and water eat usually a pent of gary was 300 naira but people sell for 1000 in east here over there in lagos they sell one two one one there about a pent of gary imagine a family that has seven in a house so they will be consuming one pent of gary every day in fact at once in one eating because in as much as there's scarcity it didn't shrink the belly size of the children they must eat to feel so these are one of the things that are pushing because of the spirit of hunger is on rampage young men who didn't understand are looking for satisfaction so they went into ritual and sit and bribed them with a little thing so they ate for a season and thought that they are satisfied they didn't know that they are still hungry a bag of rice before was within 8,000, 9,000 naira. But a bag of rice now is about 27, 30,000 naira. Check the red oil that you used to cook. Let's bring it home. The gas you used to cook before a kg of gas was about 200 and before they took it to uh, 350, they took it to 400, they took it to four something. Now, a kg of gas is almost 800 naira. And somebody who doesn't understand will say, Buari is wicked. It's not Buari. The spirit of end time. The Bible said that an angel was released. His own assignment is to make sure that there will be lack. There will be scarcity. That is the sign of the end time. That is the sign of his return. So, you see people crying hunger. You see people crying hunger that is the don't be deceived a blind man who said that the state government is not doing well and yet he doesn't understand that it's not the man that is doing it there is the spirit of the end time that is pioneering the mind of the man so he cannot think straight because he's not saved so he will produce hunger in the city people check what is happening they are holding fear now but there's fear though, but they are hodling it. They are looking for how to make it 300 naira per liter. One of the dangers of this thing is that the rich will keep getting rich and the poor will get poorer. And the bitter part of it is that those leaders does not care so far as their family is feeding well. But part of what will happen is that it will intensify kidnapping, criminality and killing. When there is hunger, there's the one that was given power to kill 
will go and cause trouble in the heart of a hungry man and he will start thinking how to kidnap one who is comfortable when he tell you about money and you don't bring it he will kill you and he will feel no remorse for it because that is the spirit of the end time that is driving them but pastors are not teaching this thing so now somebody come to church and he says he's hungry how do, what is the way out i will teach you on sunday in our next meeting i will show you the survival strategy how do you overcome this hunger how do you escape that every day you go to church pastors are preaching i shall not die who will die death is certain sir members will die ministers will die who is it that will be preserved how will you be preserved i will show you the strategy there is a survival strategy because so many people said that the sense when we were little they taught us that the sense will be gone before these things are happening but the bible is telling us that we'll be here and this thing will happen it is to an extent then christ will show up and take us out and bring the greater calamity on the earth then judge the world hello you are sitting too cold is this thing an ice block no you i expected it like this do you play when the doctor is carrying a surgery on you i am carrying out a surgery on you so i expected it to be this calm you know i told you that in this movement we are not out to give you bread and butter we want to prepare you sir we will get to a place where you will understand that dying for jesus is the duty of every believer this thing they are teaching you i shall not die check the apostles out of how many of them the only one that died a natural death was john so it is guaranteed that 90 percent of the believers are guaranteed to die a violent death in the name of christ yet the pastors are not teaching it our reference are not teaching it the prophets are not teaching it you know why they don't know it they are aiming the pocket of the people hello are we together here you need to understand these things so after this teaching now when you see somebody something happen the, the, one of it is that you see the bible said so that people will kill one another so you walk in the street you see cops you are no more threatened somebody will be crying bad government you know what is actually the cause that this is the sign of the end time so as a wise man who has been instructed by the spirit you now begin to live your life in carefulness you begin to live your life in readiness of the return of the master because he said that it will be like the day of Noah that people will face marriage somebody will face his wedding all of us will dress up to go to the wedding somebody will be on somebody's wife fornicating with the woman thinking that is business as usual somebody will plan a robbery attack and will be on his way to execute it somebody else will cook poison to give his brother and will carry it to go and give to him and all of a sudden as he's carrying the bowl of poison man descends with the part and he will be like him he will go to your house and he didn't see you. go to the house of this and see you. He said, boy, he didn't tell us he was going anywhere. Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying? This message is not 10 steps to be richer. 5 steps to kill a witch. This thing is not uh, 2 things you must do to escape that foundation. No. This thing is what prepares you. Understanding the time. The men of Issachar who knew what Israel ought to do what to do they had understanding of the they understood time after I studied carefully if you want to understand this thing very deep go to the book of Daniel and Revelation and Matthew 24 sit down study them together so you will know so anyone that is now playing I know where he's coming from is taking us closer I'm not threatened I am standing ready waiting for the master will that stop you from carrying out your earthly plans no now but what will happen to you it will put cautiousness on you that you don't need to lie to make money hello yes 
because the end time spirit makes it impossible to get money with that lion so everybody is following that code you know so many of you think that the mark of the beast is a digit oh you don't understand the spirit of antichrist is a, is a spirit a uniformity of iniquity that this is the way man does it a pastor slept with his member's wife why can't i sleep with my members a man beat up his wife why can't i beat up my own wife so in your mind you would think that you are doing what others are doing you didn't know that the spirit of the end time is exercising his activities in you and you are just a channel being executed that was the reason why you, you saw the prayer pastor philip was leading the book of Joel, it says, I will give you abundance of corn and wine huh? and oil. I will rebuke the, the water. So, in this end time, God knows how to put food on your table without you being corrupted. And he will do so for you. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Time is running. We have to stop. But we have to do maybe two or three more. The fourth sign of his coming is pestilence and divert death. Pestilence and divert death. A all kind of death. Go to that. Let's read Revelation. Go to verse 7 now. Before we go to Matthew. Verse 7. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. Yes. Verse 8. So I looked and behold, a bare horse. And the name of him who sat on it was death. Was what? Death. Follow what? Now you're going to see what was given to him to do. And Hades followed with him. And power was given to him over all the fort of the earth. To kill with sword, hunger, with death, and by beasts of the earth. Four major weapons. Remember that the first one is deception now the second weapon one is war so this spirit of death has four agencies that delivers its assignment one hunger men are dying of hunger go and check people dying every day of hunger there's no food to eat the guy will go and hang himself so that he won't watch his children die if you check what hunger does to men that death connotes both spiritual and physical death. One of the days I'll bring that time to talk about the agony of hunger. You see, hunger was what drove two women to kill their children and start eating them. Do you remember that story in the scriptures? You know what it represents in this generation? This is that era because of hunger. A man wants to ride bent. A man wants to be rich. He wants to eat belly food. He uses his child for ritual. A young man that had me on the radio and came for counseling. He said that he has gone to the first one. They didn't tell him to bring his mother. They told him to bring his sperm. They gave him soap to masturbate. And he brought his sperm. And they used it and did the ritual. And told him to come. He was to do it for three times. You know what it means? You are selling your future. You are selling your unborn children for food. This is a generation that should be called the generation of Israel. Men that can give their honor for food. The spirit of Israel is running in you if, if, if another man can sleep with you. Because your husband is poor. You are an Esau. A profound man. I told the Lord if he helps me that one of the things i must do is to prepare you that are seated here i am not in as much as the lord has given us as and that people are hearing us but i am interested that if anything strikes now so that two of us will see in heaven and greet as co-brethren on earth the shame of a pastor is that you were a great man in heaven and your members all were in hell and these guys gave you tight they gave you seed they honored you they called you daddy and you didn't give them the right message that will 
prepared them. It was hunger that drove Jacob and his children to go to Egypt. Do you remember that? Hunger can drive a man. What did I say now? Hunger can drive a man. Every day you endure hunger, we will make our time and teach on hunger so that so that you understand this thing. So that because I discovered that some of so, so many people in this generation, check them. Once there's no money in your pocket, you start being irritated. Nobody provoked you. you start feeling irritated. Your child talks, you shout. This one talk. Whenever you are calm, is when there's money. You are confused. The spirit of Esau is crammed on you. He said, This spirit of hunger, like I told you, if you look at it carefully, you will find out that it has two ways. And check what is happening now. Have you not seen the video of how they are butchering girls? Because they are doing hookup. Check them out. A guy will carry you. You will tell him to give you 50,000 for night. He said, no problem. And he will carry you. One of the videos I saw, they, they wrote that the girl went to collect 100,000 an iPhone. Hunger. Part of hunger is when you begin to yield for what you don't have. It's not wrong to desire what you don't have, but it is wrong to die for what you don't have. Did you get what I said? Check what, what they are saying in this generation. Uh, what is the need of being alive when you are poor? I've had a young man make a statement like it's better to live 10 years in wealth than to live 100 years in, in average life. I saw Satan speaking through him. Young boys are, you, are eating their own poo because they want to make money. Check them out. You check them in the street. They are betting in all the streets. And they are not ashamed. And some of the girls are associating with them. Hunger. The Bible said that food will be scarce. Check what is happening. Agriculture now is a check. Nigeria, since I was a little boy, since I, even before I was born, they were shouting diversification, diversification, diversification. They didn't diversify. Recently, they went into agriculture. The, ag the farmers are doing their best. Go and ask any farmer. But check them. If they are doing, they are not getting up to 10% of what they are investing. Why is it like that? There is a spirit that is causing it. Check it. The spirit of death, hunger, sword, that is war. People are hungry yet war. Ensas protest, a normal peaceful protest ended in bloodshed. Now they said they were folding sacks. Yes, they are still everywhere. They just changed name and they are still humiliating Nigerians. It cannot stop because the Bible said it will be so. So that he will warn you, sinner. So that he will warn you, righteous man. So that you will prepare yourself for the coming of the master. Pestilence and divert death. Sicknesses. These pestilence are things. All this outbreak of diseases, viruses. Check out coronavirus. It was from Ebola. Then we get to, what's it called? The Lassa fever from Lassa fever then coronavirus coronavirus has migrated into four levels now i think they are at the omicron or whatever yet people are dying check it out hong kong recently have shut down totally to an extent their, their own shutdown is that in a family uh, if you are five in your family five of you will not sit together to talk only two people are permitted to sit in a family in a family or your own house that's the, the, their own kind of lockdown is it like that foolish government will keep pumping money thinking that it is like that only the wise you know why god wants to shame them them that think they have hospital they are killed by this thing but we that only knows that we have god and we are running to this god he's the one keeping us you're not being kept because you are wearing masks or using sanitizer go and check people that has hospital all over the world they are dying the streets to an instance that hotels in hong kong had to donate their buildings for isolation center that, that is they are packing people streets are filled 
children are dying, yet the world don't want to learn, they don't want to know that the master is saying, return to God. Return, I will heal your land. Africa, they expected to get the number, highest number of death, survived it. Because Africa learned to follow God. It's not by being in the lab. The only bailout, I will tell you the bailout to all this nonsense next Sunday. So pestilence, diseases, breaking up, break out of diseases. Check the way people are contracting sicknesses now. Check the way husbands and wives are contracting all manner of diseases. Somebody will go to hospital and they will just call one name of something to him. Something that is unfamiliar. And you will think, oh, why is it like this now? Oh, it's because I'm eating sugar. Sugar is not true. The spirit of the end time, there is an angel that was given to kill by pestilence. That is the fourth one. Matthew 24, verse 7, gave us, is in that 7 too. It says, Famine, pestilence. Hello. Are you following what I'm saying? The fifth one is martyrdom. Killing of Christians is the sign of his return. The death of pastors, the departure of brethren. Oh, I couldn't control my tears three days ago when I when the news of the death of Reverend Ezekiel Etang he told me a good man of God who died. Believers will be departing because the time is short and corruption is increasing. God is saving some of us from not being corrupted so that we will lose our crown. So righteous people are taking home. But he will do it at once. So you see a good man in the church, he dies. And somebody will say, hey, why do bad things happen to good people? Shut up. God is taking his people home. Check in a football match. Wise men, check. In a football match, immediately they enter injury time. A wise coach removes his best players so that they don't sustain injury check it because in a football match at the injury time the best players the stars are the target so what a wise coach does is immediately they enter injury time he begins to take away his pillars his main players for the next match so believers will be departing righteous men will be going before 2030 many pastors will go many christians will go we are near the time so why should you prepare because you don't know when your own departure will be if you are keeping to the will of the lord expect him to call you home anytime you know why he will call you home so that you don't meet corruption So what? Are you still here? If you're here, say amen now. Yeah. <laughs> All of you are folding hands. Pastor, no, what's the problem, sir? <laughs> this thing don't enter fear, right? Uh, look at mama. Fear is on you, lucky. <laughs> no, we need to know these things. People that know are the people that lead. Our aim is not just for you to be rich. You'll be rich. God has guaranteed that in this movement. But our greatest goal is to see you in heaven. That is the reason why some of you that are pastors, some of you that are prayer team leaders, some of you that are coordinators in your churches, in whatever you are leading, begin to inculcate this thing in the heart of the people that are following you. Teach it in your prayer group. Teach it in your women ministry meeting. Teach it in your men fellowship. Teach it in your AYF. Teach it in your boys brigade. Let the saints know that departure is at hand. Let's read it. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 6. Go to verse 8 now. Say, so I looked and behold a pet. No, go to verse 9. Let's see the fifth horse. He said, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. 
for the word of God and the testimony which they had. Check it. Check it. If you go to Matthew 24, you will see where Jesus was telling them that here will be persecuted. Jesus told them, persecution is the fifth sign of his return. That is the death of believers. Martyrdom. How many of you can die for Jesus now? Go to Afghanistan. When the Taliban took over power, took over the government, they were going from house to house, searching people's phone. If they see Bible on your phone, you, they will kill you. There was a video we saw. They dug a grave, gathered close to 200 and something people, and were shooting them. Some of them did not die. They buried them alive. Matai them. There are four ways that God classifies believers. Ranking is not because you are the pastor of 10,000 church. Ranking is not because you are pastoring 1 million people. There is a way that God ranks men. Ranking is not because you made the blind to see and made the lame to walk. One of the ways that God ranks men, four ways. Number one, obedience. But the highest level is those that can die as proud believers say I am not gonna deny Christ I will die serving him matter item imagine now that you as you are and I told you that we're going to mission in Borno State some of you will not show up here forever but if I call your line you'll visit say this pastor does not understand I have children to train Idol. Jesus told them you will be killed. Go to Matthew 24. Let them see it where he said it. Say you will be killed. Now I will show you something. I will, this thing, this verse 9 of Revelation chapter 6, I will show you why this thing is important to the prophecy of Nigeria. I will show you what Pa Eten said about Nigeria. That is the reason why. Part of why Nigeria had not divided is because of the prophecy that is hanging. It might be impossible to divide yes because a word of prophecy has gone ahead already go to matthew 24 sir matthew 24 go to verse 8 go to verse 7 first he said for a nation will rise up. now go to the farmer pestilence and earthquake in brazil the other day if in in brazil the other day earthquake happened over 100 and something people sank and died under two weeks again there was a heavy rain flood rain that was carrying upstairs carrying buildings they, they said that is a landslide a, 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 a scientist will say is a landslide it's not a landslide it was it was the spirit of death that has been commanded by the lord that have been released into this end time that kicked the earth the earth shift and buildings sank and it covered them you can't excavate them buried them alive and they died Imagine as we are seated in this hall that something happened and the earth sank and this place disappeared from the geography of the earth. Where will you be in that burial? Earthquakes in various places. Go and read about Brazil's Brazilian landslide so that you see what happened there. Yes, go to verse 9. Verse 8. Verse 8, very fast. All things... All these are the beginning of what? Sorrow. Jesus promised sorrow. He said, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So where is your... What? what listen. Every scripture and prophecy has a season. This is the season that he told them that it is true. But listen. In the journey of faith, there is what is called the fellowship of his suffering. Hello, sir. Did you get what I said now? There is what is called the fellowship of his what? Suffering. These are the days where for you to stay pure and unstained, you don't want to do anything that will bring shame to the name of the Lord. You are so rude. Your mates are signing fake signature 
taking money. They are eating the salary of somebody that have died 15 years ago, joining it with their own, buying houses in Asaba, buying cows, and you are still trekking with your leg. It is sorrow. Calm down. He promised it. The fellowship of his suffering. Any day you join the club of deceivers, you begin to ride car. And you would think that car is a compliment from heaven. I want you to be careful by the spirit of discernment to know when the devil is bribing you and when God is blessing you. Did you hear what I said now? Go to verse 9, sir. Go to verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to what? No, read it. Everybody look to the screen. Let's read together. Everybody want to go. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and do what? and kill you jesus promised us that they will kill us i'm saying this to our team members here in as much as we are not ready we in as much as that we will not die because the devil killed us but when it is a death that has to talk about denial of our faith die don't deny do what why are you quiet do what you see, what they are raising in different churches, if Boko Haram enters a church service, even the pastor will drop the mic and run. That is the reason why some of the times our brothers in the north think that we in the south here that we are playing. You know why? Check a governor demolish the church. The members and everybody sat down in that church. He said, governor, come and kill us. We we'll worship here. Do it in the east here. Yeah. Let a governor demolish a church and surrender place with army. There is something we are not coding in the people. The fifth sign of his coming is martyrdom. Jesus, this is Jesus himself, promised us that he promised death. You see, the way they have presented death as though death is a bad thing. Death is not a bad thing, sir. Death is the gateway to eternity death, death is the gateway to the real life don't let anybody change your mind don't let anybody deceive you jesus said that we will die for his sake the journey of faith is a journey of suicide until death do us part even in death death does not separate us that was the reason why paul was saying what can separate us from the love of christ is this sword no is it hunger he said no demon said no death that is to say even in death the love of god is still continuing with us that is the reason why you must listen to the message i preached the essence of life go and get that audio and listen so that you understand there are three questions we answered in that message when does life begin secondly what is life that is the first one what is life secondly when does life begin thirdly where does life end if you settle these three things you will not be afraid of a soldier man who carries gun and tell you to say that jesus is not lord you look him in the face and tell him that even death as strong as it is is not strong enough to separate us from the love of christ so what are you here say amen Make sure you take this audio and give it to somebody to listen. You might not be very sharp to preach to them. Tell, let them listen so that they understand the sign of the end time. You go to church, somebody will man the pulpit. The, the, all the things he's saying is I shall not die. All the revelation is the devil wants to do this, the devil wants to do that. Satan is doing what he's doing. How about the ones that God is doing? What you should be crying for now is not prophecy. What you should be crying for is these kind of things. So that you know how to arm yourself. To be for one is to be what? Very important. So you enter a bus and arm robbers. Say who is a Christian here? Boldly lift your hand because you want to share. That is the shortest way to go and see Jesus. And stay with him. There is no peace on earth, brothers and sisters. There is no rest on earth. The only way the Bible said in 
Revelation chapter 6 where we are reading. He said that those that were killed were crying. That means after they died on earth, the real life started. They were under the throne of Jehovah. They have been incorporated into the union of Jehovah himself. And they were sitting under his throne. That is to say, the glory of his throne is put on the blood of the apostles. They that gave their life for Christ. And they said, Father, when shall you avenge our blood? And he said, wait. Go to Revelation chapter 6. Let's show them. Okay, say they will kill you and they will, and you will be what? Hated by all for my what? For my sake. For my sake. This one is not because you are dying because you are hustling. If you die because you're looking for food that your children will eat, you die the useless death. If you if you die because you want to be a graduate, you wasted your life. If you die because you want to be a governor, you wasted your life. If you die because you want to be the next great guy in your community, it's a waste of life, brothers and sisters. If you die because you love a girl, they want to shoot a girl and you position yourself and they shot you, you die the shameful death. The only death that is guaranteed that the age when you die is not numbered or considered is when you die for the sake of Jesus. For the sake of Christ. Am I wasting your time? These are the things that we need to be knowing. Die for the sake of Christ. Somebody say he will sleep with you before he marries you. Say no. It's better to remain a single girl and go to heaven than to get married and go to hell. That's why I, say, I shout it every day in our team. Say purity is a necessity. You don't come and be doing all this nonsense. Is my brother, is my sister, you're fornicating. You won't even like my reaction. You understand that you can fall into anything, but for you to come and be messing up with the team members, you won't like me. Don't die for money. What did I say now? Don't die for fame. Don't die for anything. Die for Jesus. Don't let them say it's, it's because uh, of this, that's why she didn't marry. Let it be. It's because she refuses to sleep with guys before marriage. That's why nobody has married her. That testimony is very powerful in heaven. Do you know the class where you belong? You belong to the class of that daughter of Gideon. That girl died a virgin. I will show you mysteries. Go to Revelation. Let's show them something so that we close. Oh dear Lord, Revelation chapter 6, go to verse, go to verse 9. Let's show them what the believers were asking the Lord. He said, when he opened the fifth, he said, huh? he said I'm slain for the word of God. He said, now look at verse 10. Look at what they were saying in verse 10. Go to verse 10, sir. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O oh Lord? holy and true until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on where they kill them you remember that girl that was kidnapped all of the other students denounced christ and became muslim that girl said no leah right that is how someone becomes a hero of faith that girl is not a female president. She's not a governor anywhere. She didn't con contend for counselorship. But her testimony is sounding in Zion. Go to China. Over 700,000 people are in prison because of Christ. Then, every Sunday, I wonder what pastors are doing, self. Somebody will mount his pulpit and be jumping. You shall not die. Say amen. If you take the message of such a pastor in Nigeria to a prisoner in China and tell him, take this message and be encouraged, that man in the prison will cry till he dies. He will tell himself that he, he has cheated himself. Because what they are giving to you in Nigeria is bread and butter. 
they've not told you the real cause men die for this thing they die for, not even men everybody dies in this thing hey, check it well anybody that must get to the cram and get that cram dies in this thing jesus told them one of the conditions he gave a church in revelation was he who endures today to the end matthew chapter 24 verse 9 he promised that you will be persecuted and they will what kill you they, are you avoiding the kill they will what so what so you say it loud now they will do what kill you now verse 11 look at what god answered verse 11 then then a white rope was given to them was given to each of them and it was said to them that they should what rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants that is we if you read the book of hebrews chapter 12 you'll see they are the cloud of witness these are the cloud of witness that the bible was talking about they, they are the people here so now they've been given a white garment to wear and the next thing that was told them was that they should do what rest you don't rest on earth you rest over there that's when you rest from your toilet from your toilet i guess so my title is when they kill you some i, I, I read the story of a woman some soldiers invaded their house and they are christian families they told them to denounce christ the man said no after flogging them doing all sort of things including the children they said no you see some of you you go to church you are leaders in your church but your daughters are prostitutes your daughters come on facebook and talk against church talk against pride talk against god criticize men of god you are not doing a good work you will be judged at the end of the day if you go to heaven and your daughter goes to hell that is the reason why you are a caretaker on earth so the soldier said to the man and his wife the nurse christ they said no they shot the first son of the woman three children each they had shot the first son of the woman and the remaining family said no they shot the second son the remaining family said no when they brought out the last born to shoot the boy cried he said mommy they want to kill me oh the woman said no boy they want to send you to see jesus said they want to you remember i told you about jesus he said he said he's waiting for you these people will take you there they shot the boy shot the husband and left the woman so they cleared her family left only her do you know pastor phil that after about 15 to 20 years later the captain that led that operation visited that house by that time the woman is not living for anything again except jesus now so the house is now in pushy area and all the rest of them when the soldier guy entered he saw a sick woman at a corner and he sat down and cried and cried and cried and the woman asked him my son who are you looking for the guy kept quiet and cried and cried again after sobbing for long he went and sat on the floor with the woman he said do you remember the day your entire family was killed the woman said it's a memory that cannot be deleted it has formed a statue in my head so he said i am the man that led that oppression the woman was looking at him and the guy said the next thing but i have become like you now i am one of you ha! the woman embraced him will you do that brales somebody came and told you that he was the one 
that cleared your family that is what they call stature in zion a mighty man in the presence of god is not a man that prays in tongues for 10 hours a mighty man in the hand and in the eyes of the lord is that man that can endure things for christ and still say jesus to the end you see because of the kind of message that has formed the nature of that woman nobody needed to teach her forgiveness you understood by the scriptures and by the spirit that forgiveness is her nature because the earth is not her home she understood by the revelation of what she said to the son that you are going to see jesus you are not going to die but some of you a little sickness took one of your tithe and you began to ask god why me i pay my tithe i give offering i give my seed and you are talking nonsense because you are just obeying Christ. That's what the pastors has taught you. They taught you to question God. Job said to his wife, shall we only, shall we receive good only from him and not receive bad? That is to say, the God of the good time is still God in the bad time. Come on, so what are we together here? The God of the good time is still God in the where? In the bad time. Never you forget that. So he promised death. The story of this woman happened somewhere in one of those Arab nations. So now look at the kind of message they are preaching in Nigeria. Come on, somebody jump up and say, yeah. And a pastor who will we wear a suit and come and speak grammar from morning to night and the people will be shouting oh oh yeah preach on pastor how many of you have said preach on since we are discussing this thing there are things you don't say preach on because if you yourself you are even under probation something is slicing your heart and pointing you telling you there is where to amend are you blessed did you get anything Yes. So by Sunday, I will show you the survivor strategy. 